hey everybody this is it is i stacy um, i'm gonna do something a little different today um it's not uh it doesn't have anything to do with tarot cards however it does have to do with uh living in our society right now and what you really should be afraid of this will give you nightmares even without pictures so i'm gonna add try to add the pictures to it instead of y'all staring at me but um, it's September 1st, 2021. This happened back in, in May. But uh, here's the story of a guy named Lawrence Banks. He's 65 years of age. And his daughter, she survived her father's vicious attack as an infant. 43 year, years later, she wasn't so lucky, according to the new charges. Lawrence Banks continued his long history of brutalizing and even killing family members when he murdered his daughter and dismembered her body in May. Police charge. He has now been charged. But he is being held without bond. They have him on a um, gun charge and ammunition charge in the beginning, but then they did, they did get him for murder. And hopefully he will never, ever see daylight again. But being in Baltimore, you never know. When Dominique Foster was just seven months old, her father threw her out a glass door, and she survived that. Now, more than four decades later, police have charged the father, Lawrence Bank, in this time being charged for her murder. Okay, and this happened in, um, um, happened on May 12th when they found her body, but they think it happened May 10th, the actual killing, uh, because one of the neighbors heard screaming around uh, May 10th, around that, uh, late in the evening. But uh, Foster being 43 years of age, she also is a mother of six. She was discovered on May 12th, dismembered body near the garbage dumpster in northwest Baltimore. Now, nothing about uh, apartment living, but you know that you can have some really strange neighbors, right? Uh, you don't want to know the people in your neighborhood. But, um... So here's the sick part. This was Northwest Baltimore, which is actually what considered a lot of people higher rent and a better place to live in the, you know, in the Baltimore County area. Okay, her hand, her head, hands, feet, and lower legs were missing. And if you feel like throwing up, go ahead. And lower legs were missing and have, and have not been recovered. Till this day, I don't think they recovered them. So her head hands feet and the lower part of her legs i think he thought that maybe they couldn't identify her with her hands missing but um put her put her in a a grocery cart by uh next to a dumpster in an apartment complex okay so she was uh only identified after the department really released photos of her tattoos which was really odd because they said that her tattoos were on her lips that were on the body, but yet uh, that just trying to think of what the fuck are they talking about? Tattoos on her lips, but her head wasn't on. Uh, so anyway, she was recognized by another family member, which was actually her daughter that called it in and said, hey, I think grandpa did this. Okay, Bank re remains in the city jail, but he is um, being, now, um, being processed for illegally possessing a firearm and ammunition in late May. During a search of his apartment on May 29th, police found blood and a gun. They didn't charge him with the killing yet, but the police documents hinted that the charges were on the way. Okay, but this, is, uh, this, this gets really sicker because there's more to his life story. The murder charges have been brought uh, brought relief to the family members who say that he, they feared Banks, now 65. He was pre previously convicted of killing his own son and a friend. Okay, he previously killed two people. Okay, and was convicted. And the, the question is, is... Um, and that, that was with other family members' deaths over 40, past 40 years ago. So, um, he killed his poor son, like, when the son was, like, 17, I guess. They say they long predicted Foster's grim fate. Okay, Dominique knew if she left this world, it would be by her dad. Her husband, Willie Foster, said. Banks killed his 17-year-old son back in 1991. You know, that wasn't that long ago. 
that same day, he gunned down a friend. Wow, a friend. Not an acquaintance, but a friend. But served only a dec less than a decade. Saying they're, they're saying only a decade in prison. It was actually eight years. Uh, so he only served a decade in prison after being awarded good time credits at court records show. So um, back in 1991, he only served eight years in prison, prison for two deaths and, and then was released to do this to his own daughter. Okay, it's unclear what evidence police might have recently recovered that prompted new murder charges. Their documents, I don't know, like blood all over the torso, uh, his fingerprints. Uh, um, so, so anyway, they, they suspected that Banks since May of 29 ser and, and searching his apartment, right? So this document detailed the investigation into Foster's death. They said officers interviewed a neighbor who heard some of the arguing on the night of May 10th. A security camera video uh, from the um, apartment complex showed from that day obtained by police showed a man with a limp in a white jacket and hoodie wheeling a shopping cart towards the lot where Foster was found. The team of detectives, yeah, like the whole team of detectives, that worked on this case were simply relentless. There's no substitute for solid detective work, which is exactly what led to an arrest. However, they keep finding him, and they just keep letting him out. I'd like to know who the hell let him out. They ought to uh, actually be in jail. The department declined to discuss further case for, the case further. I guess not, and we'll never hear more about it on the news. Because uh, it was not yet publicly available. Banks did not have an attorney listed online court records. Well, I'm sure he'll find a good one. Willie Foster called, that's, uh, you know, the, the daughter's husband. Willie called Banks a monster who, who long traumatized his wife and abused her as a child. He said he and Dominique had been married for 19 years, but his wife kept her family away from Banks. The couple moved to North Carolina about 15 years ago, but in the past year, Dominique moved back to Baltimore to live with her sister. In recent months, Willie Foster said his wife began to reconnect with her father. And uh, this is pretty sickening to listen to, So, but this is um, you know, a little bit of a gossip, but they wrote it anyway. According to Foster, his, you know, which is uh, her husband, the deceased woman's husband, uh, the court rack, Dominic Foster had been abu abused physically and sexually by her father. In the gun case, Baltimore police homicide detective said Banks had had a sexual relationship with his daughter. Okay, so they're saying at 43 years of age, this 65-year-old man was still having sexual relations with this woman. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if she, there's something mentally wrong with her or something physically wrong with her, but... They never, you know, they never would tell us exactly what exactly occurred or where the hell is her head, her hands, her feet and legs. Where did they go? Police said Foster had been staying with Banks at his apartment at 4001 Clark's Lane in, in the Glen neighborhood around the corner from where her body was found. At a bail review hearing last month, which he didn't get bail. Uh, last month in the gun case, he attempted to tell the district court judge that the gun was not his. Ain't mine, Your Honor. A public defender argued for leniency on behalf and the judge uh, and told the judge that Banks is a father of six with a master's degree with Towson University. Get out. But Sean Welsh, a university spokesperson, said Towson had no record of Banks had, was ever a student there. <laughs> yeah, maybe in prison he studied. Banks was also described as a member of the Mount Mora Baptist Church, but Leroy D Davis, a trustee at the congregation on Garrison Boulevard, said the church had no record of him ever being a member by that name. Okay, so so he's trying to get lean and saying that he's a good person in society. <laughs> wow, and uh, your daughter turns up with half a body missing. There's blood in your apartment and a gun, and, uh, you know... Uh, I guess still on parole from 1991, and he's 65 years of age. But, you know, this story, there's more to it. Okay, so anyway, other members say that he had no recollection of him ever attending 
Church. He was also a reported volunteer at the Baltimore Station and Shelter for the Veterans, but the group said no, he really wasn't. wasn't. Okay, so Bank has a history of violence and deception, according to the court documents detailed in a 2007 Baltimore Sun story. Really, I'll have to read that one for you all, too. That surveyed court files, um, police reports, and other documents. He is not at all the person that, the, uh, that he presents himself to be. He lies and smoothly talks his way out of it. He is quite a skilled and misrepresenting person. A pre-sentencing investigator wrote in 1976 after the assault of his infant daughter. Okay, there's more to that story, though. Banks told him, because that was way before he killed his son and his so-called friend. Banks told the investigator he liked to read and travel, but he admitted to a temper, but told the investigator, I have a pretty good personality. He said he dislikes violence. But the court records show a history of violent charges. Dominique Foster, I guess he's got two personalities going, if not five. Okay, Dominique Foster was just a a baby when a few days after Christmas in 1975, Banks was drunk and got into an argument with his then wife, Vivian Banks. I love that name, Vivian. I was going to name, if I had a girl, Vivian, Vivian Lee or um, Olivia, at his mother's house in East Baltimore, which the Banks, that rings a bell. I might have had neighbors uh, with the last name Banks, but yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, been on TV before. So anyway, um, <clears throat> back in 1975, when it, his first wife, Vivian Banks, he, he, got, he was drunk and threw the baby through, um, I guess, the sliding glass door or a window, okay, um, at the mother's house in East Baltimore, according to the son, he threatened he was going to do something to this baby, and then you'll both regret it. And then the woman heard a loud crash. Could you imagine? Vivian Banks rushed her young daughter to the hospital where she received two dozen stitches on her head. Dozen stitches on her. Poor baby, the report said. One of Dominique Foster's daughters, who did not want to be identified by name, citing, safe, citing safety concerns, said the baby was her mother. Okay, Banks was charged with the assault in that case, but while he was on bail awaiting trial, police found the body of Vivian Banks in a closet of East Baltimore apartment she had been renting. He had previously been charged with an assault in an attempt to murder Vivian Banks after police said he held an eight-inch steak knife to her throat, but successfully sought to have the charges against him dropped. Okay, so you all understand that, right? That back in 1975, he threw the baby through a window. And the charges were dropped, but because Vivian Banks showed up dead in an apartment in East Baltimore. That's hard to swallow. The Sun story said documents in several criminal proceedings against Banks show that detectives believe that he killed his wife. I bet he did, but because her body had been badly decomposing, the medical examiner, examiner could not determine the cause of death. Well, maybe we had a bad medical examiner and he should uh, be fired and, uh, I don't know, retrialed for this case? He got away with murder. Banks was sentenced to 15 years for the assault against a baby daughter. He was released in 1988. So, y'all do the math. That was 1975, and he got out in 1988. Then in 1991, prosecutors said he had been drinking with two friends in the Pasadena, that's Maryland, across the bridge, when he shot and killed one Michael Chrisholm. That day, same day, prosecutors said he drove to Baltimore and shot and killed his 17-year-old son, Lawrence Jr., at his foster home in Northern Parkway. That's Maryland, too. Mm, excuse me while I take a chunk out of my finger. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that there was a, a, this man should not be around any family members, or actually he should be in a cell with nobody, not even a cellmate. So what y'all think so far? It gets worse. Police said at the time, 
that Banks killed Lawrence because he was angry that his son, the son and daughter, Dominique Foster, reported that Banks had severely beaten them multiple times. Foster also reported that her father had raped her while he was drunk. I feel so sorry for the son. After her father was killed, Foster told investigators she feared Banks wanted to kill her as well. According to the police report cited in the story, Dominique Foster told investigators her father came to her school and had threatened her occasionally with meeting the same fate as her mother. But yet he got away with that. Banks later pleaded guilty to Chris Holmes' murder and no contest to his son's murder. He received 20 years concurrent sentence. Well, apparently that doesn't mean shit in Baltimore. After being released in 2002, Banks cha changed his name to Malik Sam, Sam Martin Taney. I can't even pronounce that. Sam Martin Remarried and moved to Laurel, which is Maryland by, uh, County. His new wife filed three protective orders against him in 2004. First of all, who the hell would marry some money? Knowing that he killed his family, well, did this to his family, court documented, even if, you know, you, you doubted that he did that to his own daughter, but he definitely did that to his own son, and had his first wife disappeared and then found dead. Okay, so his new wife filed three protective orders against him in 2004. Banks was charged with an assault in Anne Arundel County, which is also Maryland by allegedly choking and threatening to kill his then wife. Guess what happens to her? According to court documents in that case, Banks told her, I must kill you, and then he held a knife to her throat and threatened to dump her body in the Patuxent River. That's in Maryland. According to the Sun's story, citing the documents. He spent nine months in jail awaiting trial and then was found not guilty by the jury. I guess because they were afraid of him. By 2006, Banks separated from his wife and moved in with another woman, Lisa La Laverne Brown, 22. That's quite an age difference. And her daughter, Labrera, on December 12, 2006. Police said Brown and her daughter were fatally shot. Wonder by who? Prince George's County Police questioned Banks and asked Banks' parole agent to find violations that could keep him behind bars as they build a case. That can't be the end of the story. Uh, anyway, he was never charged, and the case remains open. You know why? Because they disappeared, too. It went blank. But anyway, let's see if they came up with anything better. So anyway, the 43-year-old daughter... Moves back to Maryland, was already afraid of the father, and then wanted to try to reconnect. Why? I don't know. So, uh, they still haven't found her legs, arms, feet, and head. But somehow, somebody identified by a tattoo called it in and said Grandpa did it. Because, uh, because they recognized the tattoo. That's, that's sickening. But anyway, uh... He had already killed his son and a friend, but the first wife, who who uh, is the mother of Dominique, was going to take and uh, put um, um, charges against him, but turns up dead. And so he got off of that, but served time just for the assault of the baby throwing, and somehow gets out early. To get out to kill his son and, and I, I guess, try to attempt to get Dominique then. But uh, got the son and a friend and then served eight years. And then somehow gets out, remarries. And they they come up with charges on him too, but suddenly disappeared. And then the third wife um, apparently has disappeared too and um, found dead. And But yet he's now being charged with at least Dominique's. A dismemberment of her body and I hope he never gets out but 
I don't know. This man could live for 80-something years. What are you going to do? Let him out for good behavior again in eight years? I mean, what the hell is with the prison system? This man should never be allowed out again. He should never have been allowed out the first time, I think, for throwing a baby. And, um, and uh, you know, the I guess... Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just baffled, just really confused about this whole damn story. But if I find out anything else, I'll let you know. Like I don't know, did they ever find part of the rest of her body? And I'll show you all what he looks like, cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a download his picture. But yeah, he looks freaking damn scary. So that's just unbelievable. And, oh, uh, man, I feel sorry for whoever found that part of that body. And it, and I guess there was more than one detective really working in this case. Forget the illegal firearm, but, uh, yeah, that's just nothing. So And, and thank goodness the apartment complex had a, a, a camera so that they can actually identify uh, his limp walk but and clothing. But uh, imagine him getting away with this one. I can't see if I can find anything else. Yeah, we're still in disbelief. Yeah, so am I. And the foster family does have an online fundraiser for the six children. Which, that's that's nice. If y'all, anybody want to go to that. Um, I feel, I mean, that just, I mean, that hurts my heart. Just even thinking about this poor woman in which... Uh, the, why she ever went around that that dirty old man, uh, especially after um, what he did to her and her brother in the past, let alone her mother. But, oh, yeah, police discovered her lifeless body on Mother's Day. So, yeah, that's another thing. It was, man, i tell you one thing. And this was the shittiest Mother's Day of uh, I, the th I've ever heard of. All these women that disappeared and all the ones that we haven't heard about. That were brutally killed on Mother's Day? Come on, you damn ad clothes. That's why I can't stand um, getting online anymore. What the hell? And it went back and shuts me out. So anyway, if I hear any anything else... Um, I'll let you know, but, um, God forbid this man gets out. Click, damn it. What's wrong with the internet today? I'll show you pictures of it. Yeah, already convicted of two other murders, but... Mm, mm, mm. Do you think he'll tell, um, and also you can hear more about it on Facebook? Remember Lawrence Banks. Yeah, it reported a woman who were close to Banks were found dead in the last few decades, but he hadn't been charged with any of their deaths until 1976. Banks was charged for 15 years in prison, but he only you know, this one says then he served seven uh, month. Um, he, no, he served eight, but. Um, she was seven months old when she was thro throwing out a glass door. Even though the baby survived, Vivian was found dead just days prior to the trial. The, bo the body was so badly decomposed, no one could identif identify her in time. Neither or find out how she died. Right, well, I'm sure he had something to do with it. But it seems like anybody that accused him, he went and got him, huh? So how many people did this man get away with killing? Now, um, Lisa Laverne Brown, who along with her nine-month-old daughter, Labrera, was later found shot to death. Nine-month-old daughter, Labrera. Oh, my God. That was back in... Four years later, in 2006, the daughter of Banks' then-girlfriend filed in a protective order against him. She was 22 years old, Lisa Laverne Brown, who, along with the nine-month-old daughter, was later found shot to death. But it says, if it doesn't switch on me, 
just two years later, Banks' then wife Patricia Samartini took out a number of protective orders against him and accused him of threatening to murder her. She claimed her he had choked her with a, with the vacuum cleaner hose and had tried to suffocate her with a pillow. This sent him to jail on an assault charge for several months before he was acquitted. Four years later, in 2006, the daughter of Banks, then girlfriend, filed a protective order against him. She was uh, Lisa Laverne Brown. They now they they were found her and a baby dead. But you know, the Patricia also was found uh, dead. Or Patricia might be still alive. I don't know. Damn, sassy. Holy shit. You, oh, man. Stop farting near my face. Oh, why is this dog? Did you see that? We're liable to blow up. My coffee got cold. All right. So I just wanted to bring you all this story. And um, I might have botched a little bit of it. But yeah, this man. Uh, pray he never gets freaking out. Or the world is in trouble. But, hey, this is why I don't want jury duty. All right. See you all. And I was supposed to start, and I, I have to probably go make three candles. I was supposed to start my money spell tonight or today. So, um, I'll be probably practicing that or getting that ready for you all. Okay. This is it. It is I, Stacy. Thanks.